I can do this, I can do this. This is likely a PE, this is likely a really bad PE, and this patient needs to go to CT scan now. So I have no financial disclosure. So this is your fresh shift as a brand new attending. You work in a small community hospital and um, it's a busy community hospital and you just filled your fresh cup of coffee, okay? You hear a little commotion and then EMS is coming, bringing you this patient. Sounds oh, like a little sick patient here, 55 year old with shortness of breath. And the only history that EMS was able to get is that this patient has untreated cancer and recently came back from Southeast Asia seeking some homeopathic therapy there. So he came back from Southeast Asia about two days ago. Does not look good. Vital signs is above, they're tachycardic, they're hypotensive, SAS 88% on six liter, 10 liters nasal cannula. EMS could not get uh, IV access on this patient. So you go in, you know, fresh, fresh, brand new attending, I got this, you know, I got no ultrasound. What I'm gonna do is just get a rush exam, right? Just see what's, what might be the causes of hypotension in this patient. So as your nurses get IV access, you'll look at this, you get this four champ of view of the heart, you notice something that is concerning. So the right ventricle, it's not supposed to be this big, mm, really worried about that septal wall. The left ventricle is struggling. Okay, let me get another view. I'm, now I'm nervous, right? So you get a, another view here, the pedesternal short axis. Not good, right? So okay. Diagnosis is clear. I, I, I can do this. I can do this. This is likely a PE. This is likely a really bad PE. And this patient needs to go to CT scan now, right? It's the donut of truth. Um, but mm, they look bad. They begin to get worse. They're more hypoxic now. They're on high flow, 15 liters oxygen, being on a breathing mass. They're not doing too good. So now you're thinking, oh, man, I think I got to toot this one. I gotta secure that airway before the CT scan. I see like a lot of you nodding their head. Yes, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. So there is, there's this voice inside of you telling you, don't do it. Actually, as a matter of fact, please don't rush. That voice, by the way, is not God. It's actually Mike Winter, by the way. <laughs> so yes, so you do not need to intubate this patient. Optimize, so what I'm gonna show you here within the next minutes, how to optimize resuscitation. First, focus on the right ventricle. Next, address hypotension. Let's talk about the things you need to focus on. So these are the three things that I want you to go home with and always remember. One, optimize preload. I'm not gonna click on the sepsis power plan. 30 cc per kick, put out your body with fluid, crystalloid. Give them all the fluid they need. They're hypotensive though. No, I would actually minimize fluid administration. Ideally, avoid fluid administration or maybe start a small, little tiny aliquots, maybe 250 cc and reassess. And these people that I will be reassessing very frequently. Next, improve that squeeze. Okay, how can I improve that squeeze? You have some choices. You can use epi, maybe dobutamine. I personally prefer epinephrine on these patients versus dobutamine. Dobutamine has more uh, risk of causing tachydysrhythmias, also hypotension. And these are the people you don't want them to be hypotensive, right? Because now you are gonna decrease your uh, perfusion to the right ventricle. Okay, epi, I'm gonna do epi, low dose epinephrine. Maybe that low dose epinephrine will have less effect on the pulmonary vascular resistance. And I'm gonna try to be cautious with milrinone. I don't know about you, but we don't have milrinone in AD. Actually, this is in the ICU. Milrinone for me, it's a good drug to improve inotropy, however, Milrone can also cause what? Systemic hypotension, which you also want to, want, to, want to avoid. All right, the low hanging fruits. You're all good at this, right? You know how to address hypoxia. You know how to address hypercapnia. Acidosis prevented because what? Because hypoxia is a potent pulmonary vasoconstrictor, right? So if you can avoid that, give them the high flow oxygen, or if they're hypercarbic, what do you do? Initiate non-invasive ventilation early. When it comes to improving afterload, now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna try and initiate those therapies. Some of you might not have in your EDs, but I'm gonna give you some ideas. Okay, so nitric oxide, epoprostenol. Who of you have it here? Maybe that, not many of us. Maybe you do have nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is expensive, so not a lot of EDs do have them. What you do have though is what? It's nitroglycerin. All of you, it's a flash pulmonary edema, I got this. Nitroglycerin drip, how about this? You can actually nebulize nitroglycerin. 
And that nebulized nitroglycerin will help with decreasing the pulmonary vascular resistance. Another agent is melranone. Remember that melranone, the bad agent that I was talking about? It wasn't really a bad agent when you give it intravenously. It is, though, good for you if you give it as an inhaled nebulized therapy. Okay? So it can help with decreasing the pulmonary vascular resistance. Now, hypotension. Oh, man, we got this, right? Get that blood pressure recycled every 15 minutes. That peripheral cuff every 20 minutes. No. I would go hard and I would start to get an A-line as soon as possible. Okay? This is, and if you don't, if you don't you know, have access to a quick airline, you can you know, maybe repeat that cuff blood pressure every two minutes, every three minutes. You want to make sure that you, know, you have close eye on the systemic blood pressure. So I'll go with airline early, as early as possible, or soon after intubation. Okay, so you optimize preload, avoided fluid. You got the squeeze going, okay? You're now addressing the hypotension. You got the ALON, by the way, now, because you have a little bit of help. And the patient now needs to be intubated. So with intubation, you have to be very careful because now you want to avoid peri-intubation hypotension. For those folks, I actually, my favorite agent would be ketamine. And I would ketamine, I would give boluses at 0.5 meg per kilo. Just keep repeating those doses until the patient dissociates. And once they dissociate, I approach this kind of awake intubation phase, and then I paralyze them. And by the way, this is not your baby dose paralysis. This is the Mike Winter's big dose paralysis, right? You want to position yourself for success. So I'll go full dose paralysis. In those cases, my favorite agent, now the one that I prefer in the ED is actually rock versus sucks, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you have available, just give full dose. Okay, done intubating. High five, high five. We're done, right? This is it. I can go get out of the room now, finish my note, and work on a transfer, because this is a community ED. No, you have to stay in the room, and you have to work on your ventilatory setting. This, these are the crashing patients that you should not be leaving their bedside. So I would go low on the PEEP, low on the tidal volume, 6 cc per kg per ideal body weight. That's like my starting point. PEEP, I just stay at 5 if possible. Got that A-line in now, I'm going to repeat the ABGs. Keep the plateau pressure below 30, and of course, the low-hanging fruits, avoiding hypoxia, hypercapnia, so you keep repeating that ABGs. So if you get anything out of my talk, I would like you to go home to your families with those important points, okay? Don't rush the intubation in these crashing patients. They're going to die. Actually, they have very high mortality, up to 50%. Optimize resuscitation before intubation. Be cautious with IV fluid. Avoid it ideally. Maybe give small aliquots. Low-hanging fruits, address them, please. Hypoxia, prevent hypercapnia and acidosis. Improve RV contractility. Decrease RV afterload with those inhaled agents. And lastly, avoid systemic hypotension. And hopefully now you're able to get the two ventricles together and get by. And finally, they now function in harmony. Thank you so much for attending my talk. Please.